What's going on, man? Welcome back to the basement. I'm Ron, and today we have something a little bit different. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys here. Friday, which was yesterday, we had the wide receiver tier list video. That video was supposed to come out on Thursday. I was supposed to write the outline on Wednesday. I woke up Wednesday to a trade offer in a sleeper league, and it just sent me down a rabbit hole where, like, for the next, like, two hours, I was wheeling and dealing and sending out trades, and what ended up happening was is I got so caught up in trading and managing my dynasty teams that... I pushed off the outline too far. So then I had no video material for the day. I just made dynasty trades. So I said, you know what? Instead of just chalking this day up as me messing around on my dynasty teams, let's make a video out of it. So today we're going to go through these six trades that I made earlier this week, my dynasty trades in my leagues, real money leagues, all of that, and kind of go through what my mindset is right now in dynasty the kind of moves I'm making, what I'm doing to sort of prepare for the rookie draft, all of that. I figured you guys would probably find this interesting to see what moves I'm actually making. So without further ado, let's not waste any more time. We're going to talk some Dynasty trades. As always, if you enjoy, make sure down below, subscribe, leave a like. Let's go. Thirsty, thirsty, trying to choose. I mean, I know I'm critical. My nitty bag. My now, if you guys remember... I outlined a couple weeks ago my dynasty teams. I went through like eight or nine teams for you guys and sort of outlined what my goals are heading into rookie draft season. So we're going to take a look at those teams, or not those teams, the three teams I made trades with and see what they looked like before and now after the trades and kind of what my motives and goals were. Because I think it's really important when making trades in dynasty. Like, yes, if somebody is just sending you a crazy offer where it's like, you know, they're going to, they want... Uh, your 24 second and they'll give you Stefan Diggs, right? Of course, you can profit by just like accepting crazy lopsided deals. But in leagues where you can't just kind of mine value on the trade market by just sort of abusing like uh, new managers or, you know, novice managers, you need to have an objective, right? You can't, you don't want to just be trading to trade. You should be trading to solve a goal on your team. So that's sort of what we laid out in that last video. And now this is me actually doing it in practice. So let's talk through the first league that we have today, the League of Mediocre Gentlemen. Now, this is one of my longest standing leagues. This is a league from, I think like 2020 during COVID, we started this up or not we, it was like, it's, this is honestly a bunch of random people on Reddit. I hope that nobody in that league sees this video. Uh, it's one that I started early on. I made a lot of really, really bad mistakes again. This is 2020. I was like not even really making content at this point. I was just out here in the dynasty streets just trying to see what it was all about. Now, this screenshot is pretty low. So let me sort of go through it before we go any further here. First, we have the positional breakdown, right? Quarterback, running back, wide receiver, all ordered and keep trade cut value. You have a key here, soft sell, hard sell. All the light reds are guys that I'm like open to selling. And then the hard red is a guy that I'm trying to move off of. You have uh, what the starting look, the starting lineup looks like. So this is using underdog ADP, which has thousands of dollars already tied up in best ball right now super super accurate data for the 2023 season just to sort of gauge where we're at my rookie picks and then I don't think I, I, there's not one league analyzer thing is that good I think they're honestly all not great but I think it's good just to sort of run your team through them and just see where you're at right just in terms of like dynasty value versus contending value give or take probably like two or three spots which just gives you you know a feel of where you're at in your league and then of course league format and then where I finished last year. So with this team, this has just been, oh, this is actually the wrong one. I need to get to the League of Mediocre Gentlemen right here. So this is what this team looks like. Now, when we talk of the league, when we talk about the League of Mediocre Gentlemen, again, I made some mistakes. This is probably like as at this point in my life, like it only makes sense for me to join a dynasty league if it's with patrons, right? So it's like with you guys, community building or networking with other analysts. That's really the only two that I'm trying to join leagues for. Like random Reddit leagues don't scratch that itch for me anymore. They're honestly a nightmare. I'm very lucky. I will say I have one Reddit league that's for the uh, Crazy Ambassador series. By the way, the plan is to get an update for you guys on that after the draft. I... The commission still hasn't fit, uh, filled the 12 spot. It's really frustrating at this point. Um, but the commissioner for this league is amazing. Like he actually is on top of everything. He's very good for like a Reddit commissioner. He's honestly a dream. So that's the beautiful part here. So what I'm trying to say is 
I haven't ghosted this league or left because one, I don't, I don't really leave leagues. I know some people do leave dynasty leagues. Maybe as I accrue more, I'll maybe start shedding leagues like this. I don't know, but I screwed it up to the point where now I have to see it through. I have to see me fix this team with the information I know now to sort of repair the mistakes I've made in the past. We made some bad mistakes here. Now this is, I tweeted about it this morning, uh, just kind of going over like how different the dynasty landscape was. The first round in this league, this was a startup draft in 2020. The first round went like this, Mahomes, which is fine, but then it was Saquon and McCaffrey, Michael Thomas, two wide receivers, or two running backs and a wide receiver in the top four, then Lamar Jackson, which was me, then Zeke Elliott, then Deshaun Watson, Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, Kamara, Dalvin Cook, Chris Godwin. That was your first round in 2020. It is insane how much the landscape has evolved since then. I think we've really sort of started solving the game a little bit better, you know, valuing elite quarterback play and everything. But it was almost a wild, wild west in 2020. We didn't have as much research. We didn't have as much uh, experience. It was still kind of a newer format for a lot of people during that time. So it's just kind of cool to see where things have gone. Now, I'm going to show you guys a picture here. This is an embarrassing picture. Again, this is 2020. I'm like writing articles, like, but barely. This is my, this is probably before I was actually even writing articles, to be honest with you guys. So again, was new to Dynasty, made a ton of mistakes. And this is my startup draft. Now, that was my old username. This is also so off brand for me. Like you guys know it we do like a dynasty startup breakdown every offseason I've done where I go through and tell you guys like how I'm maneuvering the board, where I'm trading around, what players I'm picking. And for this draft, I just sat in the pocket and picked every pick down the board from the 105. I did not trade up or trade down. I just sat in the pocket. I made picks. And I not only sat in the pocket and made picks, I took five straight running backs started taking Lamar Jackson. You guys know I'm very much kind of a zero RB bro. I either want like the super, super elite running backs or none at all. And this was the complete opposite. This was like peak me being like, at one point, I've told you guys before, one of my er, one of my first articles for Player Profiler was robust RB draft strategy wide. Like it's the way to go essentially. And, you know, we've learned and we've adjusted since then. We've gotten a lot better, but God damn, man. Miles Sanders at the 208. J.K. Dobbins at the 305, Cam Akers. I guess that wasn't terrible in the fourth round. Now, remember, this is 2020. So this is second year Miles Sanders. This is rookie J.K. Dobbins, rookie Cam Akers. I was like, oh, Leonard Fournette on the Jaguars after getting like 100 targets or whatever? Sign me up. Keyshawn Vaughn? What was he, like a third round pick? I can't. I still can't believe that I made that pick. The wide receivers were awful. The only shining spot of this was Lamar at 105. And Jalen Hurts. And I guess IU could, could throw in there. But god damn, man. Really not good. Really not good. So anyways, what we're doing is just trying to get out of that slump. Now, since this startup draft, we have been in this league. I think the first year I tried to compete, and then I've just been rebuilding ever since. We have the worst win percentage in this league. We are 12-57 and 57 all time since 2020, this team. So... I've just been trying to fix it. And you can see at this point, it's not terrible. It's not a terrible team. It's second in dynasty value. And after so much rebuilding, we are finally ready to look towards 2023 and start winning games. And that's exciting. So a lot of moves have to happen here because our starting lineup right now is Deshaun and then an injured Kyler Murray and our running backs suck. So some things have to happen here. So the first thing I wanted to do, now again, I tried to uh, tank here. I wanted the 101. I couldn't get it. I decided, you know what, let's go knocking on the 101's door. Let's see what he would want for the 101 because we're both tanking. He, I'm closer to competing than he is. He does not seem like he is ready to compete in 2023, which means he's probably very willing to move off the 101. Anybody out there that has a 101 and you look at the roster and it's like, man, that's not even a playoff team. Go knock on the door. See what you can get for that 101 because they don't want to hold on to that. They don't want to draft a running back, Bijan Robinson. Bijan does no good for a rebuilding team. So I knocked on the door. I was like, hey, like, what, what, are, what are we doing here? I saw he has Trevor Lawrence. Uh, so I just added Christian Kirk to my 102. You guys see I have my 102. The reason I have it highlighted red is just because I have Kyler. I have Deshaun. Like, I, I don't need to take two swings here, two, two and three. Like Adding Stroud and like Richardson or Richardson, Young or Young and Stroud – doesn't do a whole ton for me, right? They're not going to really help me win now. Like they're kind of like upside swings on rebuilding teams is what I'd almost call those quarterbacks. So I decided, you know, let's see, let's see what we can do with that 102. 
And I was like, okay, how would you complete your stack with Christian Kirk? Take my 102. I take your 101. And he accepted. And I got to be honest with you guys. I felt like I I came away with a steal here. Like that's the equivalent of like an early second to move up from 102 to 101. I'll take that all day long. Like that is amazing, right? That's like a very cheap price to have to pay for the 101. I didn't want the 102 anyways. And he just instantly accepted. He didn't send the counter or anything. It was perfect. Now, we also said we want some difference makers in that 20 point per game area. That's kind of one of the other goals I had because like Garrett Wilson's cool. T Higgins is cool. Like Ayuk, like we have a lot of flex options here, right? But no one really is a super high end producer. Like none of these guys on uh, this roster are like first round picks in redraft, right? And that's a little bit of an issue. That's something that you should be looking at too. Like I, I mentioned it in yesterday's video, but I had someone ask like, Ron, why are you looking at redraft ADP in April? Like, isn't it going to be pretty far off? Things are going to change, but it's going to largely be, from a macro perspective, somewhat the same. I think you'd have a hard time winning your Dice League without a redraft first rounder, if that makes sense. Like, you should have some of the premier guys in redraft on your Dynasty team. This team has none of that. So, the next deal I wanted to make, and this was actually the original guy that sort of set this whole thing. This guy, he put something in the chat of like, hey, I'm trying to make some moves or whatever. He sent me an offer, uh, and it was for Kyler Murray. I sent him a counter. He sent me this counter, and I instantly accepted. Because originally, I think that he wanted Kyler. Uh, I was down to give up Kyler, but he didn't have a quarterback to give me back. So I was, like, uh, not really interested. So then I, I think that he was also interested in Garrett Wilson. So then we talked about Garrett Wilson. And let me get this at the top here. Garrett Wilson is not a sell right now. He is not a sell at all. But after this trade, I gave away Garrett Wilson. I still have 40% exposure to Garrett Wilson. I have Garrett Wilson in almost too many leagues. I think it probably would have been five out of 11 leagues before this trade where I have Garrett Wilson. He just fell to me everywhere last year. I took him everywhere. I have enough Garrett Wilson that I'm fine offloading Garrett Wilson for a difference maker. So what do we do? We take Garrett Wilson, we add the 111, the 112, and we get Jamar Chase, a 20 point per game, first round redraft pick, wide receiver, and that's really exciting. Now, again, Garrett Wilson's not a sell. But if you were to sell Garrett Wilson, I think the play is to see how cheap you could get into Jefferson or Chase with your Garrett Wilson. Again, I think he's very promising. You guys know, like in the wide receiver tier list video, I gushed about him for like six minutes. But if you can pay like, like, like it almost seems, if you can add a first to Garrett Wilson and get to Jamar Chase. And again, I, I've talked about in the past, and it's something that Scott Connor hits on a ton with the uh, Dynasty leverage stuff. You very rarely want to do a my player plus a first for your player because the player plus a first gives you two different outs to win that trade. But I'm kind of fine doing the leverage deals if I'm getting into like a first round startup pick uh, asset. Like I think where you would go wrong is if you do something like that for a Garrett Wilson. Like if you do like what's a deal that would kind of look like that? Like I think it would probably be a mistake to do like Devontae Adams in a first for Garrett Wilson. I think that's where you can get into some trouble. Uh, I'm trying to think if that would be an overpay, but I don't think it would be. I think that that would be about market price, like Devontae Adams in a 24 second to go get Garrett Wilson. I think that would be a little bit troubling. Now, we get Chase here. We give up the 111 and 112. I'm kind of fine giving those up. This team has a lot of picks, and maybe I should have held on to 11 and 12. It's just not a range that I love right now, though. Like Now, of course, things can happen. The draft can happen. There can also be a stud that comes out of that part of the draft. Like last year, you had like Olave kind of in the late first. You had uh, Christian Watson, and he kind of gave you a big profit. So this could come back to really bite me, but I think that they are two like low enough end assets that they almost didn't feel like big pieces when you're trying to acquire a Jamar Chase, right? Like I I'm fine giving with the 111 and the 112 to upgrade Garrett Wilson to Jamar Chase. I just don't really see a huge difference from that like 111, 112 through like 204 it's like just a huge tier from like uh like i would say other from jordan addison sharb uh mayor all the way through the wide receivers of like you know zay flower hyatt mims I'm trying to think if i if i missed anybody but it's just a massive tier after that sort of like top eight so i'm fine getting out of those picks i, I really don't need the youth again i'm trying to win at this point so i like this deal i think this is one of the cheaper prices you'll get for jamar chase again i don't mean to sound like a broken record 
But if you have a Garrett Wilson or one of these like shiny, sexy wide receivers, I think Garrett Wilson would be one. Honestly, I think all the year two wide receivers like Olave, London, Wilson, see what the price is to get into Chase and Jefferson. I think that's the play. I, I, you can get a cheap price, get in there. If not, I think Garrett Wilson's a fine hold. Now, we did one more trade in this league. One more trade. Again, we're trying to load up for 2023. We got to get some moves done. Now, you'll see Kyler is red. And I want Kyler out of here. Kyler is like fine. I have 40% exposure to Kyler uh, prior to this deal. So Kyler is someone I can move off of pretty f- finely, if you will. That's not even a word, but you get what I'm saying. I have the luxury to move off of Kyler where I want to. And when I'm, on teams where I'm trying to compete, I don't hate taking Kyler, adding some plus, and getting anywhere from your Mahomes through... Lamar, Justin Fields, I think that's probably a great play. Just see what it would take to tear up. And I hit this guy up, trying to see sort of what he would give me in return. I think this is maybe a slight, slight overpay for Justin Herbert. But I successfully got Herbert or Kyler off my team. I didn't really even want the 103 anyways. I get Justin Herbert. Again, I'm on the bad side of another leverage deal. When we're talking about Jamar Chase and Justin Herbert, I think... That's where you can get cute and do the leverage deal. I think that's kind of where that kind of stuff goes out the door. I'm fine losing on a deal if I'm getting an elite quarterback or a first round startup value asset. That's sort of the difference for me. Now with Herbert, he's interesting because I think that he, this might be the cheapest you've ever been able to buy at Justin Herbert. He was the consensus QB three last year, kind of where like Jalen Hurts is right now. In every startup, it would be either Allen Mahomes or Mahomes Allen, and then it would usually be Herbert at three. Uh, for a lot of last offseason. So I'm kind of excited to get him there. I'm sort of paying. I feel like that price is more like QB6, QB7, like 106, 107 area. So there's some room for growth, whatever. I think now the team looks much more complete after making that deal. This is what the team now looks like. Let me get our after picture here. We have Herbert. Like our starting lineup looks good. I put Bijan in there just so you guys could see what it looks like with Bijan. But this looks like a very clean hero RB team that I would usually roll with like we have Herbert we have Deshaun which is fun we have Bijan RB1 Chase T Pitts by the way I don't have Burrow to complete this stack with Chase and T and I get questions like this all the time like I have Chase and T Higgins that an issue no it's not an issue they're like you can have two players in the same team especially in a high scoring offense like the Bengals and we have Pitts Ayuk Dotson Bateman in the flex we have a guy like Elijah Moore we can put in the flex Kobe Myers off the bench if Sky Moore ever figures it out we have him off the bench we got a lot of options here. And then on top of that, we even have the 202 to give a nice little depth piece. Maybe we take a Tank Bigsby or a Sean Tucker here, whatever, like running back, get some draft capital. We have a 211. We got a lot of picks to, to have some fun with. We have all of our picks in 2024 and 2025. I think this team is well on its way to competing. And I guess like just, you know, making it into the playoffs is what we're looking for here. And I think that we sort of, we did that. I don't think... I had these guys red from uh, last time, but I, I don't really think I need to move off of these guys uh, after this trade we got done. I think everything is pretty much fine. Again, like maybe I could add to the running backs, but everything looks pretty, pretty good. Unless if somebody wants to like, overpay for one of these wide receivers or something, as always, but I think this looks pretty nice. Now, the next team we have is 12 guys, one baseman, and this team was already a behemoth, just an absolute monster. Like, Look at this team. Jalen Hurts, McCaffrey, Derrick Henry. A.J. Brown, Devontae Adams, Garrett Wilson, and Joku, Amon Ross St. Brown, Devonta Smith, Debo, Geno Smith. Like, the weak points were tight end and quarterback. But you had, like, D.J. Moore, Ayuk, Pacheco all coming off the bench. Like, it's just a crazy team. Like, this is probably my best team I have. Okonkwo off the bench as well. This is the craziest team I have. And this is a cookie-cutter uh, Patreon league, Superflex tight end premium, just very simple team. Now, again, QB2 and tight end the weak point. I have enough volume stock or capital stockpiled where I have the 104, the 112. I got some capital to mess around with. So I go knocking on some doors looking for a quarterback because, again, I'm in a spot where I want to win this year. Can I hold on to Kyler and maximize his value? Like, he's going to be worth more than he is right now in a year from now. That's 100% true. He's probably like, what, like a mid-second round pick right now, early second round pick in terms of startup value. He'll probably be like a mid to late first round startup pick. Uh, next offseason after the ACL all of that he probably looks decent down the stretch but on a team like this I think I have the luxury where I don't have to wait I don't have to wait and like get like the most max value for Kyler Murray this team is already really really damn good and I would rather not you know field the Geno Smith every week and a Baker at QB2 and 
have a legit real quarterback there. So what I did was I wanted to see, like, what could I add to Kyler to kind of upgrade things? And I hit up a, a guy in our league, and I asked, could I do Kyler in the 112 for Trevor Lawrence? He said, no, 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 no. That's way too cheap. It's going to have to be Kyler in the 104 for Trevor Lawrence. So I was like, you know, we just paid Kyler in the 103 for Justin Herbert. I'd be fine with that deal. Uh, but I, I was curious. So I asked him, what would I have to add to 104 plus Kyler Murray to get to your Josh Allen? Because he had Josh Allen and Justin Herbert. And he just said, he sent me a 24 second and Iuke on top of that. Uh, and he would give me like a third on top just to kind of even some things out. And I tried to get a little bit more value there. And then I just ended up accepting. Uh, he wasn't budging. I think that it was a pretty fair price on both sides. That's a fine price for me. Like, again, it is steep. Like, it is Kyler plus a 104, which is a lot. Uh, but if that's the price for Justin Herbert, or if that's a, if that's the price for Justin Herbert and Trevor Lawrence, adding Ayuk in a second to get to Josh Allen feels pretty, pretty good. It feels pretty, pretty good. Again, we're, we're paying a lot here. Kyler, 104, Ayuk in a 24 second is a lot. But... If you scroll, like, some of the trades that happen for Josh Allen, I feel like that's not a terrible price. Like, I, I think some guys really, really will overpay for one of those top two quarterbacks. So, I'm happy with that. We fill a need. We get a guy next to Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen. And now we have a team where we just have, like, McCaffrey, all these crazy difference makers, and then two legit, like, win-over-replacement monsters at quarterback. Now, after that, I was kind of, like, messaging in the chat and saying, like, uh, kind of... I can't really remember what it was on top of my head. Let me actually see if I can pull it up. So actually, it wasn't a message, but it was something that I wanted to tell you guys about. Like, this is this is what, what it essentially was. I sent out eight separate trades. I had, again, I wrote down exactly what my goals were for these teams. And then what I did is I just went to every single team, and it's like, can this guy help me get there? Can this guy give me a quarterback in return for Kyler Murray for me to, me to get a better quarterback? Can he get me a, a better wide receiver that I'm looking for? All of these things. I sent out a bunch of offers. I think that's the move. Like, I was talking about it on Twitter the other day. In theory, if you have, like, one dice lead that you love, then, like, I guess there's some, like, beauty of the game of, like, hitting up other owners and having, like, a nice, friendly chat in the DMs. And sometimes I do that myself. Uh, where I'll, Like, this trade here, we went back and forth a couple times and I hit him up. I was like, hey, like, what would I have to add to this to get to here? But, like, these, like, you know, art of the deal negotiations of, like, a, I'm not reading an essay as to why I need you know, Josh Jacobs from your team. I'm not getting convinced or swindled or what, like, I, I don't want to hear your sales pitch, whatever. I think the most effective way, if you're playing at volume, right, I have 10 plus leagues at this point. If you're playing in like more than three leagues and you are finding yourself not able to get trades done, I know it sounds crazy and you might, you know, getting a trade done, you have like the hundredth percentile outcome of selling for the max value. If you do it this way, you might not get the absolute max value, but you will get more trades done, which is nice. I like I'm being completely honest. Every team going through it. Okay, does this guy kind of solve what I'm looking for? Could he kind of use what I want? Boom, send the trade. Little feeler, 24 hour exploding offer. I'm not, I'm I'm not having you know like somebody gets cut or hurt or I, I don't need things floating out there. You get you get 24 hours at the side if you want to if you want to negotiate with me. Um, so that's what I did. Sending out to eight guys and I got a guy counter. I was essentially doing this, and this was a uh, idea from my Discord. I don't remember if it was on the, the Patreon side or if it was on the public side. By the way, my Discord is free to join. I have questions all the time, like people asking, like, uh, how can I get into Dynasty? How can I join a Dynasty League? I have a channel in my Discord. We have, like, over 1,000 people in there called Find My League or Find A League. People are making startups, joining startups, all that, all the time there. So just join the Discord. I think there should be a link in the description. And you can just hop and find a league. Say, hey, I'm new. I'm looking for a league. And someone will either find you an orphan or something. I'm sure you'll get something done in there. Uh, but there was some guy. And I wish I could give him credit because I, I don't remember who it was. And by the way, I know some of you guys are in the Discord. I'm not super, super active on Discord. But I, I read a lot more than you think. So, like, I'll, I'll scroll and stuff. That's how I ended up reading this. And some guy was saying that he's trying to sell DJ Moore in a very small plus to get into your digs, Tyree kills, Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, your 20 plus point per game guys. I thought that's brilliant. I think DJ Moore to me is a fine hold if you're like rebuilding, you don't need points. But if you need points at this point, he is like kind of just a sexy asset. It's hard. I mean, with Chicago, I'm really starting to sour on that spot. Like it just seems like he's gonna be wide receiver two, wide receiver three. He's not gonna move the needle, but he actually carries a lot like 
he carries the most value of those wide receiver two types, you know, with like your Terry McLaurin's and DeAndre Hopkins and like that, like huge tier. He's almost seen as like a little bit a step up from that and like that wide receiver 17 to 20 area in Dynasty. And if you can add a very small plus to get into digs, any of those guys as a trying to win team, a contending team, I think you should. So that's what I was doing. I'm sending out to a bunch of people, of course, the Kyler swap stuff, but we got that deal done here. And then on top of that, I was trying to send out like essentially I was trying to do DJ Moore and like a like a future first or like DJ Moore in a very small piece for digs cup all of these guys and I ended up getting one to go he sent me a counter here and he sent me Stefan Diggs in the deal which is really really fun now it is just the 112 in my DJ Moore for Stefan Diggs and Cooks I think that's a fine deal I think like DJ Moore in the 112 for Diggs maybe a little bit steep I'm cool getting Cooks in return a nice Flex wide receiver, I've been saying, is a nice uh, buy as like a impactful flex veteran. Now, I also love the added utility of getting Stephon Diggs to stack with Josh Allen because now we have Jalen Hurts to AJ Brown and Devonta Smith, and we have Josh Allen to Stephon Diggs. So this team, we're going to go to this after slide. And yes, I don't have any first round picks in 2023 or 2024, but God damn, man, we just won this title last season and we're going into it with Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, McCaffrey, Derrick Henry, Stephon Diggs, AJ Brown, Devontae Adams, and Joku, Garrett Wilson, Amaras and Brown, Devonta Smith, and that's not to mention Debo Samuel, Brandon Cooks, Isaiah Pacheco, Chigo Conquo, Samaj P. Ryan off the bench. This is easily my favorite team. Geno Smith off the bench too. Now, of course, we don't have future draft capital. I'll figure that when we get down the line. Like maybe I'll, I'll look to in season when Geno Smith is scoring points. Maybe I can get Geno Smith offloaded for a future first. Maybe we can do something similar with a Pacheco. Maybe we can do something similar with, you know, one of the like Amon Ross St. Brown or Devonta Smith types, Chigo Conquo. We'll figure out how to make sure we get future draft capital so we're not, you know, building this massive juggernaut just for it to crumble with no youth in the future I, i'm sure i'll be able to manage it but this team is insane it's probably my best dynasty team and it's something that i i'm proud of building right we showed that first team where i went five straight running back six straight running backs whatever it was after lamar jackson just digging myself into a hole and we've now gotten to a spot where in a league with patrons you guys have my rankings you know how i operate you know all of my tendencies and i was still able to overcome that and build a team like this. So I am very proud of it. I'm very excited for the season. The team looks crazy. It, it, it's first place or bust. If this team does not win, then I might be a fraud. I don't know. Now, we have our last team here we'll talk through. Man, I'm low-key dragging on here. For, for a video going through six trades, I probably could have kept this like under 20. But I, I, I hear that some of you guys like the uh, more in-depth videos. Now, this is the last one we got. This is in the Basement World Cup. One of my favorite leagues. This is the uh tournament league where i have two separate leagues that come together for the playoffs we're going to add two more at the minimum this offseason probably after the nfl draft uh of people that are in the patron or patreon uh and this is a best ball dynasty league and this team is just so mid it's just so mid I, and we talked about it last time i wish that i just scrapped the parts mid-season and tanked for 2023 because now we're stuck with the 107 which is the worst pick you could possibly have not because like the 107 is bad value wise but just because it is an absolute nightmare to make the playoffs and then be the 107, right? Like you didn't advance, you didn't win, you just simply got there and that was it, which is not good. So that's what this team looks like. Again, it's not terrible, right? It's like Jalen Hurts, it's Kyler, which is fun, but there's just no high-end producers, right? When we talk about first-round redraft picks, there's nothing. It's just a very, like, this team could maybe limp into the playoffs again. And we've talked about it, like, I, I like limping into the playoffs because chaos can happen. But I just don't know that this is a team that can thrive that way, especially in a league like this where it's a tournament, right? So you don't want to limp in. If you, it, This expanded playoff field means you need to have a very strong team to actually take to home that overall prize. So if I don't have a team that can actually win the tournament, then I want to tank. And that's the goal here. The goal here is to strip things down and get a team that is going to score the least amount of points in 2023, stockpile picks in the future, and then load up, retool, and come out and compete in 2024. That is the ideal way to go about things. I had a guy, uh, Todd H., he's on Twitter. He's really good. We're in a Superflex uh, 
Twitter best ball league together. And I tell him this all the time, but he's executed one of the best one-year turnarounds I've seen. He came out completely tanked. You're one of the stars. It was like the perfect productive struggles. I think some guys drag it on too long. They'll come out productive struggle in year one. They'll tank in year one. And then they'll keep tanking. And it's like, like dog, like you're burning buy-ins as you keep doing this. You really should only tank one year, immediately turn that thing around. And that's what he did in this Twitter analyst league. He's wheeling and dealing. He's making moves. And he goes from last place to the championship in one singular year in an analyst league. Now, not to do him dirty, he did lose to me in the championship. Now, of course, like there was the cheese of like the Joe Burrow uh, Bengals Bills game that kind of threw everything off. But I still told him, like, you know, hats off, like, big respect because this was a team again that went from 101, drafting Brees Hall to then winning a championship, or getting to the championship and being dominant. I think he was first in points four uh, in that league. Now, I say all of that to say, we're going to rebuild here and compete in 2024. Now, to rebuild, to me, the biggest piece I have to get rid of is Jalen Hurts, right? Jalen Hurts is a guy who's going to score too many damn points for me to get the 101 next year. And because he scores too many damn points, he has to get off my team. But the biggest thing that I have to preach to you guys is you can't just take the first offer that comes in your inbox. This is Jalen Hurts. It's the 103 in startup drafts right now. I need compensation, okay? I'm not selling him for the cheap. I'm selling him for Jalen Hurts' value. And that was kind of the issue here is I, I kept poking around and knocking on doors. And the issue is that nobody really wanted to pay that price. Like, it's a lot of assets you got to pony up, right? Like, I was looking at, like, I was trying to get one guy to give me, like, the 104 and, like, three future firsts. Again, we're talking about the 103 here. That's kind of what his price is. No one's really trying to pay sticker price. So what I did was I said, you know what? Maybe we could tear down. Maybe we could tear down and net some future draft capital. So I looked around, and one of the offers I, I sent out was for Justin Herbert. I think I tried to do Justin Herbert in a 24 first for my Jalen Hurts in a 25 second. I figured by 2025, I'm going to try and compete. Uh, so take my second, you know? Like, at that point, I'm going to compete, take my second in return. And instead... Uh, of that second, he actually instead sends me Gabe Davis, which I was fine doing. So I'll, I'll happily net the difference to move from Jalen Hurts to Justin Herbert and net the difference from a 24 first to Gabe Davis. I'll take that all day. Gabe Davis is what, like a late second probably right now. Uh, so turning that into a 24 first on a team where I'm trying to push assets towards 2024 is really nice. We also talked about it earlier with Justin Herbert, but he's a guy who was the consensus 103. He was where Jalen Hurts was last year. There's a chance that Jalen Hurts has a great year and like, uh, or Justin Herbert has a great year and Jalen Hurts maybe get, gets hurt for lack of a better word. And they flip flop and I got a free first. So I'll take that all day. Justin Herbert also projected to score less than Jalen Hurts, uh, in this year, just as a, you know, someone that doesn't run the ball as much like Jalen Hurts could score 25 points per game. Herbert could be more like 19. So I'll take that, but I'm also now kind of down to do kind of like a Russian doll here to see how far I can tear down. Like, can I net can I net another two first to go from Jalen Hurts to Dak Prescott? Can I do Jalen Hurts for Dak a 23 first and a 24 first? Can I do that? I'm trying. I'm trying to ask around. I'll see if I can do that. And maybe go from Dak. And can I net two future firsts for Dak, right? And just keep pushing it out into 2024. I think that's a nice alternative if you can't get somebody to pay sticker price on one of those high-end assets on a team where you're trying to strip things down. Now, we still have a lot more to do here. A lot more to do here. Um, but this is what the team looks like now. We have Justin Herbert. We still have like the 107, 207. We have a lot more moves. This was a team I wasn't able to wheel and deal as much. There's one guy in this league that has like five 24 firsts and a bunch of 23 firsts. So as someone that's trying to get 24 firsts, like there's kind of a monopoly on them right now. So I'm trying to find creative ways to get uh, either his 24 first if he's now ready to like pony up and compete or anyone else who might have a 24 first on this roster. Now we still have a couple other things to do. Uh, we have to probably move off of Amara St. Brown, probably move off of DK Metcalf, definitely move off of these guys like Lockett, Thomas, Thielen, Kittle. Would love to see what I could get for those guys. Might even wait until the rookie draft and see if somebody will pay for them. Uh, maybe they don't want their pick and they're looking to move things around. Maybe I just wait for the season when they're actually scoring points and trade them then. But that's the gist. This, that was pretty much the first domino for the rebuild on this team. I wish I got more deals done, but there just wasn't many takers especially this time of the year like it's not going to be super super active so it's hard it's honestly hard to get 11 other people to actually be like receptive in trade talks something else it's a, a a small little trick of the trade if you're on sleeper and you're trying to get like trades done 
drop a player. Drop. Listen to me real quick. Listen, drop a player. Okay. If let's say maybe you got too many players, or like sometimes around this time of year, you look at like your taxi squad. They're not eligible for taxi. Drop a player. Give it a couple minutes, and then Sleeper will show you like who looked. Right. It'll show you like who saw that message. And if it's like five guys, I'll go to each of their pictures and match up their picture with their their team. It's like okay, I'll send him an offer. I'll see if something makes sense between these two teams. Send him an offer. So it's like you know the guys who are most active. If a guy is coming into Sleeper Chat to see that you dropped a player in the middle of April at like, you know, 11 a.m. in the morning, then he's probably ready to make some deals. So that's something that I sort of have picked up over over the years of like trying to find people willing to trade, receptive, all of that. Uh, it's tough to get deals done out here. You know, we're before rookie draft season, but I do sort of I did kind of want to do my due diligence here a little bit and get some things in motion before the rookie draft. Now, I'm going to be wheeling and dealing all types of things on the day of the rookie drafts. I think it's like the best time to kind of like leverage things. You can sort of like squat on the clock. You can, somebody doesn't want to use their pick. You can then go into their DM, see what's going on. So this was just the appetizer for what is to come. Now that is going to do it for us today. I don't really have anything to push here. This was just kind of a theory video, but if you want to get uh, on Discord and find a league, that's free down below. If you want to get on Discord and kind of like talk with me and bounce off ideas with your team, that's available on Patreon, patreon.com slash Ron Stewart. My dynasty rankings all of that good stuff. If you want to get in one of these Patreon leagues with me, that'll be on Patreon, patreon.com slash Ron Stewart, as always. Now, if you enjoyed, please leave a like. Uh, I might live stream later on today. I might have live streamed yesterday. By the time this is up, I'm not sure yet. I hope that you guys are all having a nice little spring here. In Jersey, like you guys can see, like I'm sweating a little bit. Like it's hot. I'm recording right now at 340. It's hot down here. I got two lights on me. But feels like football's like football did just end, but it feels like football's coming back around. The weather's getting nicer. I'm in here in the basement screaming at you guys, like kind of sweating it up. This is peak grind season, draft season. So we're going to be out here producing a ton of content for you guys. As always, subscribe, leave a like, and I will see y'all in the next one. I got the juice. I got the juice. Channel, chat on zone. Foolies glad I'm on. Even my haters kind of glad I'm on. Rest in peace to my vagabond. Rapper, song, singer, suspended subpoena for misdemeanor.